If we can't tell others about Jesus and we can't pass our faith along and do as the Bible says, then how can God, if we're ashamed of him, then how can how can Jesus not be ashamed of us in front of the Father? He will be ashamed of us. He'll be up there in front of the Father and the angels. Yep. I know God. That's my son. And I'm ashamed of him. But you don't want that to happen. So how can we, number one, if we can't witness to others or pass our faith along, then how can, if we're ashamed of Jesus and his word. Now, just because you're passing, your, just people always say, well, I'm not ashamed of God. I love God with all my heart. I just, uh, well, what would they, what, they're going to they're gonna think evil or mad or mean things about me. You know, the old saying goes, well, we can't talk about that around him. Chaplain Andrew's here. He's a chaplain. He's, he's holy. No, I'm not. But people have that thing going on with the fact that, well, I can't do it because of what they'll think. And so, hold on. One more quick second. I'm texting him. So with that being said, how can God not be ashamed of you or ashamed of him? And when, when you go up there and say, well, they're going to think this about me and that about me. When you're worried about your image, you're technically ashamed of God because you're saying to God that, well, I'm ashamed of you because if I talk about you, that's going to ruin my image or that's going to cause me, them to think you should not worry about what other people think. Uh, do you actually say, do you think that when you get to heaven and you're up there in heaven and you're with God and you're worshiping God, do you think you're going to say, well, Becky Sue down the road, you know, she thought this and that about me. Or uh, Jason so-and-so thought this and that about me. No, when you're in heaven worshiping God and you're truly worshiping him in heaven, you wouldn't care about what no one else thought about you. So why do you think about what other people think about you now? You, sh you shouldn't. Because when you're in heaven, you're not going to worry about what other people thought about you. The only thing you're going to worry about is worshiping God. So stop worrying about what other people think now because that's causing you to be ashamed of God because you're ashamed of him because it's causing you to either your ego is going to go bad or something's going to happen to you or they're going to think mean things about you. You have to give it to God. Say, God, whatever they think about me is what they think about me. But I know who really thinks good about me and that's you. So I ask you in Jesus' name to to hold what they think about me and to help me, Lord, to understand and accept the fact that everyone's going to think things about me and that it's not going to waver my faith and it's not going to cause me to, it's not going to cause me, Lord, to stop uh, witnessing about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Once you do that, they can't, then nothing should go wrong. You can't have that fear of people worrying about you so stop worrying about people worrying about you and thinking mean things about you because because it is one thing that a lot of people do is just they think bad things because they don't know the true meaning of what it is to be a christian like you do so with that being said stop worrying about what other people are saying because if you don't then you're telling god that you're ashamed of him so our third scripture is Mark 16, 
verse 15. And I did forget to write that down. And sometimes I do forget to write things down. But Mark 16, 15 is the scripture. Thank God on one of my last pages on the other side of the, the notepad, I had saved uh, three scriptures I actually wrote down. Mark, we're already in Mark. If you go to chapter 16. You should know that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the first three books of the Bible. If you don't, that's okay too. Mark 16, starting at verse 15. Eventually you'll learn the books of the Bible. And you'll be able to get straight to them, no matter what. And you won't be able to get straight to them. Like sometimes I don't get straight to them. But there are times when I know a little bit about where things are. And if I don't, then I at least know that parts of the Bible are in certain parts of the Bible. Like, you know, old or new. So Mark 15... Mark 16, verse 15. Let me make sure I got that right. Yep, Mark 16, starting at verse... Where is it? Starting at verse 15. And he said to them, this is after Jesus died on the cross. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, in this scripture here, it can also relate to what we are talking about now, which is this. Go to all the world and pass your faith along. Tell others about Jesus. Let me get into my comments for a minute. Mark 16, verse 15. Because, why is it important to pass our faith along because the biggest thing God wants us to do is to pass our faith along to everyone we meet and not only pass it on but to make disciples of them so that they too can pass their faith along as well after becoming saved so why is it important to pass our faith along number one because God wants us to not be ashamed of him in the gospel. So it's important so that we're not ashamed of God. Number two, the reason why is because not just to not be ashamed of God, but that so that God will not be ashamed of us. And the third reason why it's important to pass our faith along is because the Bible says to go to all the creatures in all the world and pass your faith along so that they, and not just pass it along, but make disciples out of them so that they may, what, in turn, pass their faith along too and that they can become saved think about do you want to be the only one in heaven i don't think you would want to be the only person in heaven so passing your faith along to your brother is very important so it's important to pass along because number one god in your ministry you do not want to be ashamed of god because you won't have ministry number one number two god will be ashamed of you if you're ashamed of him and number three it's important because you want to bring more people to Christ. And in turn, you want them to pass their faith along to others as well. See, the best way to get somewhere with anything, for an example, if you're, you know, making an online store or if you're, you know, if you got a podcast or whatever the case is that you're doing, the best way to get it out there is word of mouth. Think about it. How many times has somebody, have you told something to somebody and they misconstrued it so much that by the time you get done and everyone comes back to you and they go, oh, I'm so sorry, brother. I'm sorry that for some reason you cut your ear off that I see. <laughs> because it's the way people are. We used to play a game in, in school when I was in elementary school called Telephone. You take a, a toilet paper tube and you whisper something into the tube. They whisper it into something else. And then finally, when you get to the end, by the time you get to the very end of it, it's a totally different thing that, than what you said. You might say your ear hurts, and then by the time they get to the very last person, they go, yeah, by the way, Andrew's ear hurts because, Chaplain Andrew's ear hurts because he cut off the bottom of it. No, I've never said that, but with the way people go, they misconstrue things so much that it sounds like that when it's not that at all. So it's important to pass our faith along so that we can make disciples of people and we can get the word out. But how do we do that? 
by word of mouth. It's great by word of mouth. You can get to uh, you can get one person saved. You can you can through Christ have one person saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And you we never know, but that one person might know a billion other people he can talk to. Not exactly a billion, but a lot of people. It's like, what if you talk to the corporate owner of a of a business? Say I talk to the corporate owner of my work at uh, Cerna and Sons Produce, right? And then I save him through Christ Jesus, and then he goes and talks to everyone else in the re- in the plant. He goes to talk to everyone else on the uh, the board and. Then the 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 um, the people who are big bosses. The, by the time he gets done, he's talked to a lot of people. So see, the word of mouth is the best way to go because then he can talk to other people, or they can talk to other people as well. So it's good to pass on your faith because number one, you don't want God. Number one, you in your ministry. You don't want to be ashamed of Jesus because your ministry won't go, number one. Number two, you don't want God to be ashamed of you because you're ashamed of him. And yes, by by worrying about what other people think, you are saying that, God, I am ashamed of you. Because what I'm talking about about you is making other people think bad things about me. And I can't have that. My ego is important. I'm ashamed of you, God. So you don't want to be ashamed of him because you don't want him to be ashamed of you. And it's good to pass your faith along because not only that, it also shows your testimony of where you came from and how God saved you. And when God, when you show others how God saved you, then you can get to the point to where others might say, you know what, I've been through the same stuff Chaplain Andrew went through. You know, like for an example, I used to be gay as a $3 bill or so I thought I was being brainwashed to think that. But somebody might come up and say, you know what, Chaplain Andrew's story just was so moving that I realized that I used to be gay and it's just, it, 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 it makes me so sad to think about these things or, or it could be that I am already this way and I, and since Chaplain Andrew changed and I don't know why I listened to this show today, but since Chaplain Andrew changed and God saved him and he's living a good life now and my life is terrible and I'm between each man and blah, blah, blah and I'm being dumped every other day and well, I figure out, I'll take Chaplain Andrew's approach. If it works for him, it should work for me. And then you never know by giving or passing your faith along what other people might be going through. They might be going through the same stuff that you're going through. And just by passing your faith along, you never know what or who that might change their hearts. So with that being said, passing your faith along is important for three reasons. Number one, because it's good and you have a good solid ministry. You can't have ministry or do ministry if you don't pass it on. Number two, you don't want you don't want God to be ashamed of you because you're ashamed of him. He'll be ashamed of you in front of the Father. He'll he'll be ashamed of you in front of the Father. You don't want that. And in front of the holy angels. And number three, it's good to pass it on because you want to give others your testimony, number one. Number two, you want others to be able to pass their faith or their testimony along as well. To get even more souls for Christ. So, and I'm going to coin the phrase. Well, I'm not going to coin the phrase, but I'm going to say this to you. I encourage you each and every week to pass your faith along to others. And each week, God willing, because I'm not promised tomorrow, but God willing, each week, if I remember, and God will remind me to to keep encouraging you each week to pass your faith along. And I'll be asking you guys how you're doing on passing your faith along. So let's do a passing our faith along challenge. It doesn't matter how you do it. You don't specifically have to go up to somebody. Do you know Jesus? That's old school. Even if you, even like for me, here's what I do. I go up to somebody and we're talking for a minute and he goes, Oh, you like this job? I said, well, it's a job and God gave me the opportunity to make money so I can have a family. So thank God. That right there is passing your faith along. Even if you just say a little blurb like that. You don't have to. Do you know Jesus? Do you want to become saved? You should pray for people. Yes. And that's good. And you should. I'm not mocking God at all. But even just that little bit right there. Even just that little bit of. Hey. God gave me the opportunity to do it all over again. Like I say. I woke up this morning. What can I complain about? God gave me the opportunity to do it all over again. So even that little blurb right there. 